Okay, so now let's see the basic market clearing model in which uh, uh, all markets are in equilibrium. Aggregate supply is equal to aggregate demand and we will find the equilibrium price and the equilibrium interest rate for the economy. Let's take first the commodity market. We know production by individuals is given by this individual production function that depends on labor. And this labor that uh, an individual is willing to work depends on his utility, which he maximizes. So we, if we aggregate all these uh, production functions of individuals when they are happy, when they are maximizing their utility, we will reach the aggregate supply of the economy, which will be a function of the aggregate labor. Remember, in equilibrium, aggregate supply is equal to aggregate demand, but in this case, we don't have anything else but consumption, demand. So, an aggregate, production equals consumption. And remember, we had two basic shocks. Shocks in the production function and uh, uh, changes in the interest rate. When there is a parallel shock, there is a positive income effect and... Uh, Consumption increases and labor decreases, and uh, for an individual, if labor decreases, then his production will decrease, which uh, will partially offset the uh, initial increase uh, in the production function. If we have a proportional shock, then the income effect is basically the same, but the, in the substitution effect, we have an increase in consumption and an increase in labor because uh, you're more productive. And then if we assume, and empirically this is correct, that the substitution effect is uh, stronger, then we will have an increase in consumption and an increase in labor. And finally, if there is an increase in the interest rate, there is no income effect on aggregate terms, and we have an intertemporal substitution effect by which uh, consumption decreases, present consumption and then present labor increases because you want to work more to be able to save more. If you work more now then your production function will go up and that means that your uh, production increases because of the increase in labor. Thus an increase in uh, the interest rate uh, decreases consumption and also increases production. So uh, production depends positively on the interest rate and consumption depends negatively on the interest rate. And if we draw it out, it looks something like this. Production depends positively on the interest rate and consumption depends negatively on the interest rate. So we have decreasing uh, aggregate supply curve and, in, and an increasing aggregate supply uh, curve sorry, decreasing aggregate demand, and that will yield the equilibrium interest rate in the economy, uh, that is the point where aggregate supply equals aggregate demand, and uh, behind aggregate demand, sorry, aggregate supply, we have the um, aggregate labor at equilibrium in which all individuals are maximizing their utility. Remember that in the credit market we had bonds and that they were paid their uh, interest rate, that was the return of bonds, and that an individual could be a lender and hold a positive amount of bonds or could be um, a borrower and hold a negative amount of bonds. But that on aggregate, uh, in a closed economy, uh, the stock of bonds is equal to zero because both cancel out. And uh, if we have uh, that the money supply is constant, then uh, then savings is just this, no money involved. And uh, since it's equal to zero, and this is equal to zero, then it's all equal to zero. So there are no savings in a closed economy on aggregate terms. Now, if we go to the money market, we have an exogenous money supply that's given, for example, by the... Federal Reserve, uh, and then we have a money demand, which will look something like this. It will depend positively on prices, because if prices increase, then you need more money, and then it will depend positively also on uh, supply, because uh, 
Well, that's income because uh, if you are richer, then the number of transactions in the economy uh, will increase. And uh, it depends negatively on the interest rate because as we have seen the interest rate is the uh, return of bonds and for example if the return of bonds increases then uh, you will have just an increasing opportunity cost of uh, holding money if you could be holding bonds instead so it depends negatively on the interest rate and at equilibrium money supply is equal to money demand so if we plot it in a graph it looks like this money supply is equal to money demand at equilibrium and that gives us a uh, equilibrium price level so if you have seen the ISLM videos you will think well why is the price here and not the interest rate and uh, the answer is basically that uh, prices are the opposite of the value of money I'll give you an example. Imagine you have five euros in your pocket and every day you buy a sandwich which costs you five euros but suddenly prices go up and the price of your sandwich is not anymore uh, five euros but is something more. So with these five euros you have in your pocket you cannot buy a sandwich anymore. So when prices go up uh, the value of money goes down, so they're the opposite. Now imagine we have an increase in the demand for money, that is uh, uh, this function right here, phi, uh, is, has increased, for example, because we have an increase, uh, an increase in, uh, in supply, uh, which increases transactions, then uh, this phi will increase. But uh, the slope of the money demand curve is just uh, 1 over phi. If phi is increasing, then the slope has decreased. So an increase in the demand for money will bring down this curve right here. And at this price level, uh, there will be an excess demand for money. Uh, if there is an excess demand for money, then remember, uh, the value of money is higher money is more uh, desired and uh, that will bring down uh, the price level which is the opposite remember the example of the sandwich now to clear the money market again the prices need to go down until this new equilibrium price is reached and all is cleared again so we basically have three uh, aggregate con uh, consistency conditions which need to be met uh, simultaneously in this model if we have that all resources are efficiently allocated then uh, at the point where uh, supply equals demand for commodities uh, we have uh, that yields the equilibrium uh, uh, interest rate and uh, then at the point where uh, money supply is equal to money demand that yields the um, equilibrium price level and if we use the Walras law which says that if we have n markets and uh, n minus one markets are in equilibrium then the last market is also in equilibrium and we have one market here that's cleared one market here that is in equilibrium and we have also the uh, credit market uh, so uh, by the RAS law the credit market has uh, to be also in equilibrium so we have three markets in equilibrium and uh, the aggregate condi consistency conditions are met simultaneously.